like and subscribe and you'll have amazing luck for the rest of the week. In today's video, find out about a shark attack that left an entire city gripped in fear and the worst documented case of shark attacks in history. Number 10. Jose Ernesto da Silva In beaches where sharks frequent, warnings are given to swimmers not to swim in deep water. While most heed these warnings, some completely ignore them at the cost of their lives. Jose Ernesto da Silva was swimming off the Paidade beach near Recife on Brazil's northeast coast. Coast guards on the shore were trying desperately to alert the 18-year-old swimmer that a shark was swimming near him and tried to signal him to swim towards the shore. The place was notorious for sharks and warnings were posted all along the beach for swimmers not to venture into deeper water. But despite the warnings, Jose, along with his brother and a few friends, swam to deep water anyway. It was during this time when what was believed to be a tiger shark attacked him and took a chunk out of his femur and ripped his penis clean off. He was taken to shore and rushed to the hospital where he died from his wounds. Number 9. Bethany Hamilton one of the most famous surfers on the planet and the subject of Hollywood film, Bethany Hamilton's shark attack is probably one of the most famous in all of history. Not because it was such a terrible tragedy, but because it perfectly displays the strength and fortitude that we are capable of showing. The surfer was riding waves at the age of 13 when a shark came up beside her and bit into her board, ripping her arm right off her body. The bite was so quick and clean that Hamilton reportedly didn't even realize what had happened until she heard friends screaming and saw the red in the water around her. Quickly rushed to shore, Hamilton was taken to the hospital where her injuries were quickly seen to. You might think that this kind of event could scar a young girl forever, but not her. Hamilton has gone on not only to continue surfing, but also to become one of the most successful female surfers of all time wearing her scars as a symbol of overcoming odds and never letting any disability stop anyone from doing whatever they want. Number 8. Lisa Monday Lisa Monday was just out wakeboarding one day, and by the end of it, she became a statistic as a great white shark attacked her and lived to tell the tale. Lisa was bitten several times by the vicious predator after she fell from her wakeboard at Jimmy's Beach, Port Stephens in Australia. She was bitten several times on her head and arms, ripping out an artery from her left arm, which left her on the brink of death. The attack also left her with deep gashes to her face. She quickly rushed to the hospital where doctors feared they'd have to amputate her arm. But 15 hours of surgery later, doctors were able to save her arm, leaving her in high enough spirits to be able to smile as she lay on her hospital bed. And instead of being horrified to go back into the water, this former shark victim became a shark welfare activist, fighting for the preservation of these deadly but highly misunderstood creatures. Number 7. Rodney Fox Rodney Fox was just 23 years old and newly married when the event that changed his life forever happened. In 1963, Fox was competing in the South American Spearfishing Championships. He was diving just off the coast of Odinga Beach in Australia when the attack happened. A great white shark bit into him and dragged him down into deep water. Panicking, Fox was able to gather his wits enough to gouge the predator's eyes. It let go, allowing him to swim to the surface where he was met by water stained by his own blood. A sight that he admitted would haunt him forever. The shark was still near him and circling for another attack but it was fortunately attracted to Fox's fish float instead. A nearby boat fished him out of the water and took him to safety. It took 464 painful stitches to put him back together, but he survived the near-fatal encounter. Instead of developing a stifling fear of sharks, the now 80-year-old has actually developed a respect for the predator and has spent over 60 years of his life trying to protect the great white shark. Number 6. Barry Wilson Barry Wilson's case is notable because he was the first recorded shark attack victim in California history and because of the many eyewitness accounts of the attack. In 1952, teenager Barry Wilson was swimming in Lover's Point in Pacific Grove, California, 
when a shark attacked him. Witnesses have said they saw a shark surge out of the water and attack Wilson before pulling him underwater. One eyewitness even saw Wilson jerk suddenly and unnaturally from side to side. Wilson eventually resurfaced in a pool of his own blood, screaming and flailing his arms. Other swimmers in the area rushed to his aid. They managed to get Wilson onto an inner tube and fought for 30 minutes to get him through the rough surf and back to the beach, with the shark following them the entire time. Sadly, wounds to Wilson's left leg, right thigh, back and buttocks were too severe. He died by the time they reached the shore. Number 5. Jesse Abregast Shallow water seems like a strange place for a shark attack. After all, they sometimes get so close to the shore that they can barely move. Nonetheless, it happens. While it's hard to say for sure why sharks attack in shallow water, some species, such as the bull shark, like to feed on murky, warm, shallow waters. On July 6, 2001, a 7.4-foot, 200-pound bull shark tore off the arm of an 8-year-old boy in Pensacola, Florida. The shark attacked in waist-deep water and took a bite of the boy's arm and thigh during the first pass. The shark then clamped onto his arm. While people on the beach wrestled with the shark, it ripped the boy's arm off. One man then pulled the shark ashore and shot it four times in the head, pried open the mouth with a baton, reached in, and pulled out the boy's arm. The boy and his arm were rushed to the hospital. The arm, which was ripped off four inches from the shoulder, was reattached, but the loss of blood left the boy near death and caused brain damage. The boy remained in a light coma when he was released from the hospital five weeks after the attack. Number 4. Lloyd Skinner In 2010, what was supposed to be a quick vacation swim ended in death for Zimbabwean engineer Lloyd Skinner. The 37-year-old was pulled under the surf and dragged out to the sea by the shark, believed to be a great white, off Fishhook Beach in Cape Town. His diving goggles and dark patch of blood were all that remained in the water. According to witnesses, Skinner was standing chest deep 100 meters from the shore and adjusting his goggles when the shark struck. It was seen approaching him twice before he disappeared in a flurry of thrashing. Cape Town's Disaster Management Service had issued a warning hours earlier that sharks had been spotted in the water, but the shark flag wasn't flying. After this deadly attack, shark spotters were posted on mountain slopes to look for sharks close to popular swimming spots. The spotters used radios to order that a loud alarm be sounded so people can move to safety, thus reducing the likelihood of another deadly shark encounter. Now it's time for today's best pick. Or in this case, our worst pick. Today's pick is one of the bloodiest and deadliest events in World War II, and it didn't even happen on the battlefield. Find out more next. Number 3. The USS Indianapolis Toward the end of World War II, the USS Indianapolis was tasked with a top-secret mission. The mission was to deliver parts of the little boy nuclear bomb. This weapon would eventually be dropped on Hiroshima, helping to end the final phase of the war. The ship was successful in its mission and sailed to Guam to take on other sailors and continue to Leyte. On July 30, 1945, the USS Indianapolis was attacked by a Japanese submarine. Torpedoes ripped into the ship. Roughly 300 to 1,195 men crew went down with the ship, and the rest were left in the open waters. Then the unthinkable happened. Sharks came in droves. They first busied themselves feeding on the bodies of the dead soldiers. When the dead were gone, they turned to the living. This feeding frenzy continued on for days, leaving a trail of death behind it. The sharks attacked the sailors up until the day that a passing patrol flight accidentally discovered the men floating in the ocean. Commander Robert Marks and his crew on a seaplane were the first to arrive at the scene on August 2, 1945. The crew defied orders, landed in the ocean, and brought men on board while acting as a buoy for other sailors. By nightfall, ships arrived to rescue the remaining crew, and the sailors were finally safe from the sharks. 
Of the 900 sailors in the water the day the Indianapolis sank, only 300 survived. Number 2. The Jersey Shore Attacks Decades before the release of Jaws, there was one shark attack incident that forever labeled these fish as mindless, vicious, bloodthirsty predators. During the summer of 1916, the New Jersey Shore was gripped in terror as for a period of 12 days, shark attacks left four people dead and one seriously injured. The first victim was a 25-year-old Charles Vanzant, who went out for an evening swim in Beach Haven, New Jersey. Something grabbed his leg and tore away a chunk of flesh. He eventually bled out from the injury. Just five days after this attack, another shark claimed a life. At this point, fear began to spread. Newspapers started running headlines about the shark attacks, and beachgoers took to the water with more hesitation. Unfortunately, two more people were to lose their lives. The attacks finally stopped when two fishermen were able to kill the man-eater. Before we move on, I've got a little challenge for you that'll take five seconds to complete. So here's the deal. You just leave a like on this video, smash that subscribe button and hit the notification bell, and you will get 25 years of amazing luck. Try it, it really works. Number one, Shirley Ann Durden. Contrary to what you're thinking right now, great white sharks rarely attack humans, much less kill one. That's why every single great white fatality makes the news, such as the case with Australian woman Shirley Ann Durden. The 33-year-old mother of four went out snorkeling near Port Lincoln in Peak Bay, South Australia with her husband and one other man to gather scallops. The trio were in shallow water that was just around seven feet deep, so they felt quite safe. They finished what they set out to do without incident and were already on their way to shore when the unthinkable happened. Shirley was savagely attacked by a great white shark. According to eyewitnesses, it was at least 20 feet long. In a spray of froth and blood, the shark proceeded to bite Miss Durden in half. Fishermen on shore tried to rescue her, but by the time they reached her, all that was left of Shirley was her headless torso. As they watched in horror, the shark reclaimed the remainder of Durden's body and disappeared. This was the first time ever documented that a victim was eaten by a shark in Australia. To this day, it remains among the most brutal shark attack ever recorded. Until next time, adios.